In one sense, people have been genetically modifying food ever since they first started farming. They selected plants that had larger seeds, that grew better, that were easier to pick, that were easier to cook and that tasted nicer. They found that if they planted a new crop from the best plants, then the new crop inherited the beneficial characteristics. People didn't know it at the time, but inheritance works because plants pass on in their seeds DNA that codes for the way that they grow. Improvements occurred when DNA was accidentally altered. Most of the time the result was a worse plant, but when people spotted that it happened to create a better plant, they could ensure that it was preserved. In this way, over thousands of years, people brought about a dramatic improvement in crops and animals. When scientists began to understand how all this worked, they started to use radioactivity to create lots more accidents in the DNA. As before, most of the accidents were not improvements, but there were more improvements to choose from, and this is how many of our current food crops were developed. Then scientists learned how to read off the exact structure of DNA. They realized that you didn't need to make accidental changes. Now DNA can be changed at specific spots. You can cut out chunks or splice in extra DNA. Big changes can be made. You can take DNA from one species of plant and insert it into another species. Very useful for disease resistance. There's still a lot to learn about biology, but enough is known to make useful modifications. When genetically modified food was first invented, it was called genetically engineered food. Then environmentalists started a scare campaign and the food industry decided to rebrand it as modified instead of engineered. They thought engineering was too frightening, but I think we should go back to calling it genetic engineering. All sorts of improvements are being made to crops by engineering. The most important are resistance to pests. There's also work making plants that require less water and fertilizer or that will grow in poorer soils. When you listen to protesters, it's hard to pin down exactly why they object to GM food. They know that genetically engineered food is safe. People have been eating it all over the world for a decade now, and no one has got ill. In any case, objecting that genetic engineering is unsafe is a bit like objecting to electricity because it's unsafe. Sure, you want to make sure your hairdryer is designed not to electrocute you, but that's no reason to say that electrical appliances should be banned. It's the same with genetic engineering. As long as we design and test each product to make sure it's safe, there's no problem. In fact, GM food is even safer than electrical appliances because people have been unfortunately accidentally electrocuted, but no one has even gotten ill from GM food. Often uh, anti-GM campaigners talk about the social and economic consequences of GM food. But what do they mean by that? It seems to be that they are frightened by supermarkets and big seed companies. But supermarkets and big seed companies have done a good job delivering variety and nutritious food. That's why we're healthier than ever. Let's chill out about their latest offering and enjoy GM food. I'm Joe Kaplinski on the Chill Out Desk.